There's going to be a heck of a quarterback battle going on on West End. Nate Johnson has the leg up, and we'll tell you why. Let's go. You are Locked On Bandy, your daily podcast on the Vanderbilt Commodores, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on, welcome into the Locked On Vandy podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Corey Burton. Thanks for making Locked On Vandy your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get the podcast or and or on YouTube as a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Well, Vandy has it quite the quarterback battle on their hands now uh, between Nate Johnson and Diego Pavia. And I'm going to, I'm going to say Nate Johnson has the leg up. I'm going to say it again. Nate Johnson has the leg up. Well, you're probably wondering, well, you just spent the entire last two episodes talking about Diego Pavia and what he brings to the table and the moxie and the, you know, his possibility of winning the job. And that's still all on the table, but Nate Johnson has the leg up and here's why, because you have to fit, you have to, you have to know that what the quarterback battle will look like to know like, Hey, this is Nate Johnson's job to lose. And, it's going to be up to Diego Pavia to come in and actually win that job from him. And, and this is why, because what, what Nate Johnson has done, Nate Johnson is on campus already. Diego Pavia is not, they've already started classes. Diego Pavia has not enrolled as far as I know. And for Diego Pavia, he's going to have to play catch up in the summer. He's going to have to work out. He's going to have to come in and he's really going to have to, to hit the ground running. And so Nate Johnson is bonding with teammates he is learning the playbook. He will go through spring practice, so he'll get all the, probably all the number one reps because it's going to be him and Drew Dickey in the spring. Uh, the two freshmen aren't early enrollees. Diego Pavia is not an early enrollee. I think the only other guy is uh, the uh, Pavia's backup in uh, in New Mexico. And so it's going to be – Nate Johnson, they're going to see what he's got. They're going to see what they have in him. And he's going to get the lion's share of the reps. And this is his opportunity to go out and win this job. And here's how he's going to, here's how he can do it. He can, he can grasp a hold of the playbook. Like he can start making checks. Um, he can get comfortable to the point where he can operate this thing. And it wouldn't matter if the coaches were there or not. That's what Nate Johnson has to do. That's why he has a leg up because it's just going to be basically him. And this is the guy that they originally handpicked for uh, for Tim Beck's scheme. This guy is perfect for what Tim Beck wants to do. Diego Pavia is also perfect for what Tim Beck wants to do because he just came off two seasons of doing what Tim Beck did at New Mexico State. So, um, But Nate Johnson, I, I think – is, is by the time Diego Pavia comes in, there is a really, 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 really good chance that Nate Johnson has already won the job. And, but that's also assuming that Nate Johnson comes in, does what he's supposed to do and just, and just blows this thing out of the water. And, and that's, that's, that's where we're at with it. And that's what this quarterback competition is going to look like. You're going to see a whole lot of Nate Johnson, um, and then the other guys. So the spring game is going to be that. Then in the summertime, now they're not going to necessarily come out and say Nate Johnson's our starter without bringing in Diego Pavia, without looking at these freshman guys either. They're going to give them a fair shake. But in reality, this quarterback competition is a two-horse race, and you're giving Nate Johnson an entire semester of a head start to to figure out College life at Vandy, which is definitely not Utah or New Mexico State for either one of those two. Um, so you got to figure that out. Um, you're going to have to figure out uh, chemistry with these receivers. You've got transfer receivers coming in as well, and you're going to have to get you're going to have to get chemistry with those guys. You're going to have to understand what your offensive line has. 
you're going to have to get comfortable with Tim Beck, which, um, you know, if, if you flip this thing around to Diego Pavia, that's the advantage that he has, right? He knows Tim Beck. He could probably speak Tim Beck's language. And at this point, at the rate they played last season, he could probably call the plays that Tim Beck is going to call and, and be in lockstep. So that's why Diego Pavi is not out of the race, but Nate Johnson has a chance to get to that point because, and, and if he can, it's just going to be talent versus talent at that point. And th- that's, that's where this thing gets interesting because talent versus talent. I'm not so sure Nate Johnson can't, can't be the guy uh, talent versus talent because Nate Johnson's bigger, stronger, uh, probably faster, you know, all the physical tools that Diego Pavia doesn't have. And we don't know quite the moxie, quite the confidence, quite the intangible stuff that Nate Johnson has. We'll get a chance to see that in the spring. But we, we know with Pavia because he's he wears his heart on the sleeve. He's out there. He's, you know, he's all borderline cocky. I guess you'd call him cocky. He peed on the – allegedly – uh, peed on the uh, the New Mexico Lobos uh, logo on their practice field, which not the greatest move of all time, but um, but this is going to be a fun one to, to kind of go back and forth on because you know you have these two factors and and uh, and it's just it's going to be good. But Nate Johnson has the leg up because now he can learn the system and it at worst case scenario equalize this thing when they come in because like as soon as Diego Pavia committed. The, the attention shifted immediately to, well, Pavia has the upper leg because he played for Beck, and he's every bit as good uh, talent-wise as Nate Johnson and every bit as good quarterback-wise as Nate Johnson. Well, Nate Johnson now has a chance to equalize this. That's the leg up because if they were coming in the same – if they were coming in the same time, if they were both early enrollees, if they were both going through spring, I would go ahead and give the leg up to Diego Pavia. But not so fast. Pavia is not enrolled in classes. He's not going to be here till the summer, which, again, Nate Johnson's getting all the attention. He's getting all the reps. He's getting all the learning. He's getting all the chemistry with the receivers. Um, and, and he's doing all of the things that you need to do to win a quarterback battle. And so that's why I think that he can possibly win this thing and I think his chances are better than uh, what they were when Diego Pavia committed is because if he can get it equalized as far as knowledge and quarterback play, his talent can win this job because there's so many things. He, he's explosive. Diego Pavia is good. Diego Pavia is a good runner, but he's not explosive. He's not as fast. He's not as sudden as Nate Johnson. Like you watch Nate Johnson – uh, score that 27 yard touchdown against Florida. I mean, he exploded the hole. He was he was on the he was on the third level by in the blink of an eye, and he put he put a subtle move on on this dude and dropped him, and then went and went and basically scored untouched. Like it, it it was a thing of beauty. Like he can do everything that Tim Beck wants to do with this scheme as far as the reason stuff, and. He's just got to learn it. He's just got to learn how Tim Beck thinks. He's got to learn the checks. He's got to learn the nuances of each play design and each scheme and each uh, scheme family. And if he can do that, he can equalize this thing with Pavia because Pavia already knows all of that. Pavia is in a physical talent battle. Nate Johnson is in a quarterback battle. And for Nate Johnson to have a leg up in the quarterback battle, he has to equalize things and he has to get on the level with Nate, with Diego Pavia. And he can't do that if Diego Pavia is here because Pavia is going to outshine him because Pavia knows all the checks. Nate Johnson now has the ability to get all of that. Um, and he's going to have it all to himself, basically. Uh, and all he's going to have in his way is Diego uh, – Diego – I'm thinking of Diego Pavia. Uh, he's going to have Drew Dickey and uh, Nate Berlwitzer. I don't even know the guy's name. Um, and quite frankly, and then sad to say, doesn't really matter. So uh, that's what this quarterback competition is going to look like. It's going to be Nate Johnson surging out ahead, and everybody's going to be all enamored with Nate Johnson, as they should be. He's extremely talented. He's a really good quarterback, and he's going to show you a lot of a lot of really good things 
from the quarterback position, but don't don't rest right after spring. Don't say, hey, this is our guy, because Pavi is going to come in and have something to say about that. And he's going to do it in a big way. So we'll see. Like we'll we'll know. And the, the that's going to make fall camp really, really fun. That's going to make that's what's going to extend this storyline even further as as we go. That's going to make it fun. So uh, stay tuned for this. But Nate Johnson for sure has the leg up at this moment in the quarterback race because he can make this a a talent race and and equalize the quarterback aspect of it. And and that's 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 the chance that he has to do. He has all the questions. He's going to have pretty much all of the first team reps and he's going to pretty much have Tim back to himself for a spring for 15 practices or 14 in a game or something like that. Yeah. No. 13 scrimmage in a game or however they however they do it. Uh, it'll be fun to watch. And so uh, stay tuned to that. Uh, and that's going to be good. So when we come back, we're going to talk about the keys to a successful season. Because I said, they, I said in an earlier show, uh, there's some optimism around the around the program. Vandy's going to make their goal. Their goal is a bowl game. They're going to make it. We'll tell you why. I'm going to tell you the keys to that and why that's still intact. Right after this. All right, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Well, uh, the divisional round of the playoffs is over, so we're heading into conference championships now, but you can still get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there's so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. You can find new bets in the Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. That's probably your best way to find popular parlays, and much, much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to make your first bet a layup. FanDuel is the official partner of the NFL. All right, welcome back. Segment number two. Thank you for making Locked On Vandy your first listen each and every day. Uh, make make sure you tune into Locked On SEC. Make sure you make them your second listen or third listen or fourth listen. However, just make us your first listen and then make them Locked On Ole Miss, Locked On Auburn, Locked On Georgia Bulldogs, Locked On whoever your team is, Locked On Vols because Vandy plays the Vols. Uh, you want to know what the Vols bring to the table? Uh, make sure you uh, make sure you listen to that. And uh, also, uh, quick programming note: if you want to uh, the Vol and Out podcast, I, I know a lot of people listening aren't Vol fans, but uh, I made a guest appearance over there. They wanted to talk about the game coming up uh, against Tennessee at Memorial Gym this coming Saturday, a week from yesterday, as I'm recording this. And I went on their podcast to talk a little bit, have a little fun with them. So they do a, they actually do a really, really good job. So make sure you check them out. Check me out on there uh, if that's the only episode you ever watch. Um, but it is, it is good. Those guys are fun. Um, and uh, d- despite being Tennessee fans, uh, no, it was a fun show in all seriousness. But uh, check me out there as well. So um, I mentioned in an earlier episode, right? There's reasons to have optimism. Well, the quarterback battle is going to be a reason to have some optimism because like there's going to be some juice around that Pavia versus Nate Johnson. Like those are two really talented quarterbacks. They're diff- They can be difference makers in this scheme. Now, if they were just in a standard scheme, it probably wouldn't be that exciting because like they're not standard quarterbacks and Vanderbilt definitely can't be standard with, with the, with the talent that they have on the field. Like they have to kind of be, I'm not saying they have to go like full triple option, like, what the Naval Academy used to do and, you know, Army and what, you know, Paul Johnson used to do. But I think that just being unique in what you do is going to be really, really good. And what Tim Beck, the strengths that he brings to the table um, are uh, in, incredible. And this quarterback paddle is going to get some juice and hopefully it'll, it'll hopefully it will uh, attract some offensive linemen. Now uh, I made a goof on, on, uh, on X earlier today and, um, I saw a clip where uh, they were uh, Luke Newman was uh, making his announcement to the school he was going to. Well, the graphic, uh, the 
the, the Vanderbilt graphics and the Michigan State graphics look a lot alike. I'm just – I'm not going to lie to you, like the way they're structured. So I just kind of glanced at it and just – he, I knew he was a, I knew he was a target that we were going after, and I knew the, I knew that there was a really good chance that Vanderbilt could get him to to come play offensive line here, and so I saw it. It looked, it looked like it belonged to uh, to the Vanderbilt, uh, Vanderbilt Commodore side of things, and so I went out and congratulated him. I welcomed him aboard, and apparently I was just welcomed aboard Spartan Nation. Uh, thanks um, at Vandy six two. Uh, Vandy underscore six two for alerting me to actually double check uh, the the graphic and realize that he was committing to Michigan State and not Vanderbilt. So uh, I made a goof there. So it happens, right? Snow days, man. I, my brain is my brain is frozen over. Uh, my brain and the street out in my neighborhood look exactly alike. Complete sheet of ice. So. Um, that was I thought you I, I thought you guys would have a little fun with that, but uh, I say that to say that the quarterback battle is going to bring a lot of juice, and it already it already has. There's going to be quite a buzz. I'm probably going to talk about it a lot, so just buckle your seatbelt here. I'm going to talk about different nuances of why Diego Pavia has a chance, why Nate Johnson has a chance, why Diego Pavia has a chance, why Nate Johnson has a chance. Don't count out the freshmen. Like, what do they, you know, how do they factor into it? You know, things like that. And then when we get into spring, I'll kind of overanalyze what Nate Johnson's doing and then definitely overanalyze spring game. That's just kind of how we roll here. Uh, but uh, the bowl game is still well within reach. And it's January, so... Of course it is, right? You're gonna say, "Well, no kidding, Corey. It's it's definitely it's definitely in 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 view, right?" Um, and I still wholeheartedly believe that. So uh, here's why, okay? Here's why, and uh, here's the keys to a successful 2024 season, right? On offense, you've got to create explosive plays, and I think they're going to do that. Looking at what Tim Beck does offensively with his motions, formations, things like that. And I don't want to get too far into the weeds with analysis, but I believe no matter who the quarterback is, is going to create explosive plays. You have Jeremiah Dillon who can stretch the field vertically. Uh, You're going to have a really nice running game and an opportunity to uh, involve the quarterback, which gives you a whole lot of possibilities. uh, And the possibilities are, are pretty much endless. So you have to create explosive plays on offense. Why is that important? Um, because creative, because uh, creating explosive plays leads to points. Points leads to wins. Also, creating explosive plays gets juice going in the stadium. Gets gets fan support. Gets people interested in what you're doing. And once people are interested in what you're doing, the stadium is going to quit being ninety percent orange or ninety percent red and black or ninety percent blue, and it's going to be in favor of the black and gold. People like scoring. And scoring creates juice for your defense, which then creates more juice for your offense. And the snowball effect, like my friend Steve Stephen Willis over at Locked On uh, Ole Miss says, it's it becomes a rolling ball of butcher knives. So uh, create explosive plays. Uh, number two, uh, be aggressive on defense. And um, Vandy wasn't terribly aggressive on defense uh, a year ago. I, I don't. I don't recall and, and watching them, I you know, I'm I'm not huge on stats. Stats don't tell the whole story. You you gotta watch how they play and you gotta watch the schemes and how they play situationally. I just don't think they were as aggressive as they need to be. Van, Vanderbilt can't afford to sit back and be passive. Uh, they have to be they have to come after you, and Clark Lee will do that. And I think Clark Lee will do that off schedule. I, I think I think he'll continue this. Uh, he, I, I felt like he had a pretty good knack uh, just seeing some of his stuff from Notre Dame. I think he had a pretty good knack of situational football, not only down in distance, but field position. And he's going to come after you. I really like a lot of the blitzes that he brings. Um, and I look forward to analyzing some more of that as well. So make your quarterback, make your opposing quarterback's life miserable. Um, not only does he have to, uh, not only does he have to pick himself up off the ground every time, but he's going to have to worry about the different looks that you're presenting, the the possibilities of pressure, 
Like you, like when you hit a quarterback enough, there you don't have to keep hitting them for them to make mistakes and get happy feet and all that good stuff. They're going to do that on their own. So you just need to be more aggressive. Come after them. Be aggressive in your coverages too. Like trust these guys that can go man to man. Marlon Jones is another transfer that is going to come in and really kind of lock some things down. You have a six four corner that's going to make life miserable. I don't, you know, and I'm I'm going to watch. I'm going to try to see if I can find some stuff on him at Wyoming, Colby Taylor. And so uh, you you have a chance to be, you know, not only it's not only your front four or your front seven that makes quarterbacks' lives nightmarish. It can also be your corners. It could also be your safeties. It could also be just the different looks that you're presenting. And they have a chance to do that as well. And there's going to be some new quarterback play uh, here in the, in the conference. Like you have Brock Vandergriff starting for the first time. You'll have a new, you'll have probably Ty Simpson starting for the first time at Alabama. Um, if Milrow goes to the portal, you're, you're going to have, you know, a new guy at Arkansas. Uh, you'll have a new guy at LSU, which Garrett Nussmeyer, he's really, really good. But again, can he do it week in and week out? Uh, and, and you're going to have some, you're going to have a chance to do some, do some special things. So be aggressive, come after people. Don't, don't be shy. You're Vanderbilt. You were 0 8 in the conference last year. You like what? Like you can't can't get any worse. You can't lose negative one games. Your record can't be negative one and nine. So go after somebody, right? Uh, and the third thing is be elite on special teams. And and that's, I mean, all three of these are probably pretty no brainers. But I'm kind of explaining what it looks like. Be elite in special teams. Like when I say elite, I mean be one of the best tops in the country at flipping the field, be one of the tops in the country at hitting, at making all your makeable, like make all of your makeable field goals. All right. Make some tough ones, flip the field, have a really good hang time average, have a really good average distance per punt, you know, be great in coverage teams, create turnovers, get big returns, create good field position for yourself, either defensively by creating a long field or offensively by creating a short one. And um, just be elite in the special teams. That can that goes a long way. People don't realize that, but it does go a long way if you're elite in special teams. You can make up a lot of ground there. You can provide juice to your offense and defense by being elite in special teams. So, um, and I think that they will. They have a really they have a really nice punter, and I, I think they have a chance to do some special things in in the special teams. And so this is why I think. This is why I think all the goals are intact, right? It's it's bowl or bust, I think, for Clark Lee. It's got to be, and and he knows it. That's why he took over the defense. So those are some keys. Those are some general keys. We'll get more specific. Um, that'll be something we look at. Uh, your top three keys for every game. Uh, we're going to have some goals to to accomplish during spring practice. That'll probably be a little bit more specific than creating creating big plays when the takeaways. Uh, you know, it'll be like establish this, establish it, you know, what it, we'll have, we'll have goals uh, kind of throughout, but um, those are the things that Vanderbilt need to do and can do and will do, I think, to, to make the bowl game, to be a success. And it starts with Virginia tech. And, and from there, you know, how you start against Virginia tech is going to kind of set the tone for the season. And you do those three things those are like the pillars of like football. Like I created uh, a, a goal for each phase and it's general. I get it, but um, that's what we do. So when we come back, uh, we're going to finish out the show, man. Basketball, man, it's on a skid. It is on a skid. Stay tuned. Yes, so uh, Locked On. Uh, make sure that you are listening to the family of Locked On shows, um, Locked On SEC, Locked On Ole Miss, Locked On Auburn, uh, three of my favorites there. Uh, Locked On Dynasty Football, if you want to go outside the college realm, they do, a, they do a phenomenal job. I listen to that one a lot. Locked On Titans for all you Nashville people, uh, which I'm sure most of you are Titans fans, so Locked On Titans is, is a really good one with Justin Rowland. And uh, I'm – I'm a big Falcons fan myself growing up in Atlanta. Locked on Falcons, locked on Braves. As you can see right here behind me 
It is yeah, right there. Jeff Blauser and Mark Lemke has the press box caught fire. So go Braves. But anyway, I digest. I'll see you back in a minute. All right, that was a, that was a nice little uh, local ad break there. Um, and uh, just wanted to just want to remind you, I appreciate you everydayers. Uh, you you kind of make this thing go right. So if you follow the scroll right underneath, follow us on social media, locked at locked on Vandy on X and IG uh, at Coach Burton thirty six. If you want to follow my personal page and kind of see what I'm up to, just in general, um, and just kind of kind of check check me out um, everywhere. And so um, again, big. Big, big thank you to the everydayers. I think you're growing. I'm getting some new new subs. I'm up to 160 now. The goal is a thousand, and there's some special special things in the works. If uh, if you guys get to a thousand, get me to a thousand, uh, we'll uh, we'll do something cool, and uh, we'll add some elements to to the show. If you get me to uh, if you get me to 250, uh, I'll start doing some uh, some Instagram Instagram lives. Uh, I'll start making some TikToks maybe, uh, but I'll start doing some like YouTube shorts and things like that. I'll start kind of adding to uh, the basic show. Uh, if you, but we got to get our first milestone for that. That's our incentive for uh, to get to two to get to two fifty. Um, I always make posts and stuff like that, but like special YouTube short stuff and and things like that. Like out, you know, not you know, not pre recorded cut up, cut ups of my show, but um, actual. YouTube shorts. So uh, get to 500. We'll cross that bridge when we get there, but there'll be something cool there too. So anyway, whew, I, uh, I, I, I digress. And um, that's because this third topic, I really don't like, I, I, I really, it pains me to talk about it because I'm a broken record in, on, in this, in this scenario. And it just, it's brutal, brutal to watch. Brutal to see, but there is still, there is a lot of buzz, a lot of noise around it. So I got I have to address it because I'm sure you guys want to hear it. Um, I'm not going to leave the show with it because, um, you know, who wants to leave the show with that? But um, there's quite, quite a stir and basketball's on a skid. Men's basketball's on a skid. And, um, you know, women's basketball got a really nice win. Um, but uh, the, uh, the men's team's on a skid and it, it's not looking like it's going to get much better and the schedule is only going to get tougher because you know, you're, you have no inside presence. How do you adjust to that? That's what Scott, like that's what Jerry Stackhouse needs to show to prove that he can be a part of this program. He needs to figure out, okay, I don't have any dominant inside players. I got to figure out what to do. Like maybe we run more. Maybe we create transition baskets for ourselves, right? Because we can't shoot, we can't rebound, and we can't. We definitely can't throw it down to the low post because we we got nothing. Like Ezra Manion can't drive to the drive to the lane every single time he touched the ball. Like that's not going to happen. It's not realistic. He's a great player, and without him, it'd probably be much worse. But you you can't rely on that. Like you're going to have to f- figure out a way to shoot. You're going to have to figure out other ways to get to the rim. You're going to have to figure out how to create easy buckets for yourself. And that's just not happening. And like the players aren't on the same page. Jerry Stackhouse looks kind of disconnected. Um, They're not taking good shots. They're definitely not rebounding. Uh, Second chance points on the other end of the floor are a problem. You're getting bullied inside. Um, uh, the turnovers have gone down a little bit, but still, there's some costly ones in there. Uh, but these 13-2, 8-0, runs just can't they, – they just can't happen. You can't go on long scoring droughts in this league. This league is a lot better. It's not the SEC of like 2006 where like, two teams are going to make the tournament and, you know, it's kind of a breeze. Like you can kind of – you can kind of suck a little bit and be middle of the road in the SEC, whereas like if you played like that in the ACC – you would probably get stomped, and you just you just can't do that. You've got to figure out a way to shoot. You've got to figure out a way to make up for the fact that you don't have an inside presence. You have to figure that out, right? If hell, just pay me, I'll figure it out. 
right? Might be a better option. I don't know. Like I, I just I just feel like it's a little bit broken record ish here on this. And and you know, and I hate to be so negative, but like maybe stack just isn't right for the college game. And that's okay too. Like some people just aren't fits everywhere. Right? Like there's a reason I don't coach in the NFL. I wouldn't be a good fit. I'm a high school coach, right? My style is more geared towards high school. It is what it is. You know, I'd probably flame out in the in the pros. I'd probably flame out at Vanderbilt, to be honest with you. Um, just because it's different. Like, right? Jerry Stackhouse is an NBA guy. He has an NBA mentality. He needs to be in the NBA. It just doesn't like either he needs to change a lot or he needs to be in the NBA, which I think it's going to be the latter because he's not going to change much. People don't change a whole lot. It's just my two cents. But anyway, um, time flies when you're having fun, man. Um, you know, I hope you guys uh, are looking forward to the end of all this snow. Hopefully it's the last of it uh, for the year. Uh, and uh, I'm certainly tired of it for sure. So, uh, but that's going to do it for us here on the Locked On Vandy podcast. Thank you for listening. Find us on social. And uh, thank you, big time. Thank you to the everydayers. Be a friend, tell a friend. Make sure you pass the word. Locked On Vandy. See you back here tomorrow. Let's have a good week. Anchor down.